you are in for a treat today. If your motivation, if your inspiration is suffering a little bit, if you're thinking, ah, is this work ever going to pay off? Is this really going to work? Or how, how is it that I can make a difference when there are so many other choices in the world for fitness today? This is your episode. Online fitness business or virtual studios are the path many fitness professionals took during the pandemic. Whether you were doing it already, you were forced to look at other directions for your business during quarantines, or you're considering it now. This episode has tips for you. In this episode, I'll explore ways to grow your online fitness business with an inspiring interview with an award-winning Canadian fitness professional. If you are struggling to stand out online, seeking inspiration so you can keep going, trying to figure out why what you're doing isn't working, then tune in and take notes for your own online business success. In three short years, my guest has done something with her passion for exercise that could just reignite the spark in you. Success leaves clues. This one's full of them. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Fitness Marketing Mastery, where I share marketing and sales strategies that are anything but sleazy, salesy, and pushy so that you can build a business and a life that you love with integrity with easy, enjoyable, even fun marketing strategies. And I also from time to time share with you the menopause fitness specialist hormone balancing tools that I use with our specialists who are here helping women navigate midlife and beyond. But today it's all about building a business and building one that thrives. My guest today is Suad Gabon. She's CanFit Pro's Fitness Professional of the Year and a leading fitness and health expert in Canada. She's also the creator of Montreal's hottest workout, Hot Booty Ballet. She has 20 years of teaching and training experience, which include dance, gymnastics, circus, and fitness, as well as being a world dance and sports aerobic champion. Suad is the fitness correspondent for Global TV Montreal for the past eight years, has been featured in many media and print outlets, such as Huffington Post, The Gazette, TVA, The Globe and Mail, Salute Bonjour, Radio Canada, and many more. Always at the forefront of creativity and trend setting, Suad launched the Hot Booty Ballet Virtual Studio in 2018 to ensure instructors and studio owners had continual access to fresh movement and training ideas. The Hot Booty Ballet Virtual Studio houses a community of fitness or fabulous fitness bros who can deliver the program in person, outdoors, thanks to ballet by the water, and virtually all over the world. As a motivator and a role model, which you will hear from her voice, Suad's passionate personality and unique energetic style of teaching allow her to connect easily with people, bringing out the best in every individual, helping them to go beyond their personal goals and expectations. And I want to make sure you hang on until the very end, the last probably two or three minutes, she gives you some golden tips there are no accidents where success is concerned, and you will hear how well planned she has her business and the videos that she creates. Let's dive in. So, Ad, thanks so much for being here. Well, from taking time out from your busy life at the beach. <laughs> Uh, hi, Deborah. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm really looking forward to talking to you. Well, and we have to clue people into we met at CanFit Pro, and it, gosh, it's been two and a half, three years maybe now, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, I remember you. I remember being so impressed by you're having somebody do your makeup. And I'm like, wow, I'm not having anybody do my makeup. And you're like, well, but they're recording. And I'm like, okay, well, they're not recording my session. So there you have it. <laughs> I remember 
being impressed that you do all the digital tech things. I remember I asked you, how do you always send the same answer? And I think you said, oh, just write those two letters. And then in your messages, it will always come up that same message. And I still remember and use that today. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm thrilled. <laughs> so my one digital tip, you took it. Great. All right. <laughs> Well, everybody needs to know you definitely because you are you are such a light, and you know this is one of those shows where everybody um, we're audio only. But listen, she's got a face and the energy for video, so we should probably be doing it. But I will definitely try and dig up a photo to share along with the show notes. But definitely, I mean, you've heard the awards, the acclaim that she's won. And, you know, I want to talk about the birth, you know, how was Hot Booty Ballet born? I mean, where was that brainchild birthed? It's so funny because the people hear about it and they're like, oh, it's cute. They think it was just like a booty workout. But what actually happened, Deborah, is I was a professional dancer for 15, I want to say 18 years. And one day I was just standing there and I just moved my hip to the right and I tore my groin completely. And I remember being like 26 years old and I couldn't walk anymore. I was on crutches, wheelchairs, the canes. I had to do rehabilitation. I couldn't put the weight of my body on my hip anymore. And while I was doing physio and rehab, they kept giving me the mini bands to strengthen my glutes, my knees, my hips, my pelvis. And I remember they'd tell me walk side to side, like you see it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start using the band as my dance partner and start doing cool moves with them that are still therapeutic, still rehab. But that's how I created the Hot Booty Ballet. It was really from my personal injury. And I was working with mini bands that was pretty much the only tool they would always give me as exercises. And then I started to take that tool and make it as if it was my dance partner. And that's how Hot Booty Ballet was created. And what's really great about it is it's one of the few programs that is prevention, a workout, and also rehabilitation. So a lot of people feel like, oh my God, this is wonderful, especially as we grow with our knees, our ankles, and our hips. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming back from my injury and trying to go back in group fitness classes and being like, oh my God, I can't wait to do spinning or oh my God, I can't wait to do yoga or boot camp. And I couldn't do one full hour of any type of fitness method. So I said, you know what? Why not create a fitness a method that had one song cardio, one song conditioning, and one song stretch. And then we alternated again, because then that would only be bearable for one song for my hip. And so that's what I did. I took really all these elements that were working for me at the time, gave it a cute little name like me. You know, I love, I love to <laughs> shake it up. Hot Booty Ballet. I, I remember people are always shocked by reading it, but always super curious in trying it. So I just put it all together. Together, and now it's been about, I want to say, five years, and we have 200 instructors and 4,000 members around the world. That is phenomenal. Okay, so some of this we want to unpack for our listeners, well, all of it, but I want to unpack it in layers so that they can absorb it. So there's so much here. So number one, I mean, you, this wasn't just, a, oh, I'm going to lie awake at night thinking, what would it be that would make me an influencer? I mean, it <laughs> actually had purpose and solved a problem for you. and Absolutely. And therefore... Who's drawn to it? So I have that question. So some people are potentially drawn to it because they, like you, you mm -hmm. know, want to do it and want to – I I'm going to use this and I don't mean to use this or say this in a condescending way to listeners or to you or to myself for that matter. I'm a dance minor back in the day. Um, but people want to feel pretty doing Absolutely. things. Women want yeah. to feel pretty doing Absolutely. things, not just – awkward or doing mm -hmm. the mechanics, but mm -hmm. I think we want to feel good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and yet if you, you can't do the full, you know, distance or length of time, or maybe the intensity of something else, you know, this is doable. 
Who comes to it? Who, who loves it's, it? It's, you know, I love that question. I love that you asked that question. Initially, it was really for me and my members that were coming to class. I would say they were younger girls. What happened was because of the essence of the method, there was no bias because the only thing that would differentiate, let's say, the 60-year-old or the 30-year-old or the pregnant lady or postpartum, it was the amount of mini bands and the intensity of the mini bands. And that's mm-hmm. what I love. And that's what health clubs love. It's not like, you know, most boot camps, let's say, are more advanced or this or that. There was no a separation. Everybody can come to a hot booty ballet class. And the mm-hmm. only difference is the intensity of the mini band you choose to work with and how many mini bands you choose to put on. And what we found, it was just crazy, Deborah. That's why I'm so happy to be on your show today, is the seniors just ate it up alive. They took it in because they felt like it was a program that they can use to stay healthy and fit and prevent and rehab without it being a childish program. It was a sexy program. And Hmm. whether seniors had uh, reduced mobility or whether they were sitting down on a chair and using it to do exercises, they felt good. So they embraced that program really early on from the beginning. Oh, I love that. I, and it was, the word that comes to my mind is that it was respectful of them. Yeah. Not condescending. fun and safe. And you know, mm-hmm. like you say, like just because you're 50, 60, 70, it doesn't mean you don't like the most popular songs or you don't like to be flexible or you know what I mean? So it wasn't, uh-huh. it didn't come to that older population in a way to, uh, okay, let's do that. It wasn't like in a baby way. It was in a fun, mm-hmm. sexy way. And they love it because like I said, the band is We say two things in Hot Booty Ballet. It's resistance, but it's also assistance. So it assists Mm -hmm. them a lot in life to mimic the movements that they're doing with the mini bands. Oh, I love that too. And, you know, I do love the fact that having like a mixed generation or a multi-generational class Mm -hmm. just brings people back. I think bringing people together, gosh, I mean, can we say that right now? Because in the last two, two and a half years, if you're listening to this as we go live and the recording airs, you know, that's about where we are post pandemic. And we're also, I think, maybe a little anxious about getting back in the public, but we're Mm -hmm. looking forward to socializing and being together. And though there's something to be said for you know, hanging out among groups of people who are just like you and understand you. I think there is also a lot of energy to be gained by being with groups of people who are different ages than you and Mm -hmm. getting that kind of energy. Oh, they love it because they, you know, everybody becomes friends and everybody becomes like part of something that we call them the hot booty babes Mm because everybody's a babe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it, it's not condescending, <laughs> but it's cute. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I call my group babes too, actually. You know, it's like, geez. Uh, okay. So there's the program. When did it for you begin to? I mean, you were okay, I'm aware this is not just working for me. Other people like it too. And this is going to be bigger, maybe, than I ever had a vision. I mean, when did that dawn on you that, wow. You know, when it did, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest. I think it was three, four years, the conference that we met. And I remember talking to Maureen Hagen, uh, the chief officer at Mm -hmm. Canfield Pro. And she said, bar and ballet, like that ballet bar is Mm -hmm. becoming a genre on its own. Like you have mind body, you have spinning, then you have boot camp. And that was in the beginning of it. And she says, go, go, go with it. And I was like, I didn't know if she was honestly saying the truth. This, I didn't know. What happened was bar blew up, but 90% of gyms or studios did not necessarily want to put bars in their classrooms just for two or three classes a week. Mm -hmm. And we were a fitness bar genre who was solely done like in the center with the mini bands. So you didn't Mm -hmm. have to invest in putting up bars and blah, blah, blah. 
I'm a fitness director. So when I created it for programming or instructors or gym, I knew when somebody comes to pitch me a new fitness uh, program, uh, the equipment got to be easy to handle, which our mini bands are super easy to handle. It had to be super easy to store, which mini bands, you just put them in a plastic bag. It had to be easy to transport, which was super easy to transport. So I had already in my mind thought, okay, if I'm going to sell this program to other health clubs and studios, what are you know the things that they are going to have to deal with that I can store? help already with. So that's what happened. It was super effective in that way. And what was the other point that made the program really blow up really quickly, other than the center work was I created it from a place of injury where I had gone through and a lot of fitness professionals come from a place of injury also. And it was the type of program where it wasn't like pushing or nagging any pains they already had, but they knew, okay, after the cardio comes the stretching. So they love teaching it because it felt good on their bodies. And then in, in a ripple effect, people fell in love. Like now I walk, I go to studios and people come, oh, you should really try hot booty ballet. Like not knowing that I'm the creator. And I'm like, finally, we got to that place where it's not just me. Now people are trying to sell me my own program, which is amazing. <laughs> that is so funny. Full circle. Oh my gosh, I love it. All right. And then when when did it evolve into, all right, I'm going to make this a course that trainers can take and are you licensing them or certifying or how are yeah. you handling that? Yeah. So we did it. We were doing it live for the past two years. And then we have now our online division, which any instructor can go online, take the course, get certified, have access to the online studio with all the movements, the videos. Uh, honestly, the instructors just came at us. It was like <laughs> we started working also with a lot of professional athletes. And then we started working with the national ballet schools. And then we started working with the rehab centers and then we started working with senior center. Do you know what I mean? How crazy yeah. one program, just one tool and one program was able to be kind of dispersed in different environment where it was needed and it mm -hmm. still held true. Like we always say, we have the recipe, but you can use your spices. Mm -hmm. And that's what everyone did. And everybody took it on. And what was really great, Deborah, is in the beginning of the pandemic, when all the equipments were being sold out, you couldn't find a barbell anywhere. You couldn't find nothing anywhere. Well, guess what? You can always find a mini band. <laughs> mm, so rich. Oh, my God. So I, I think if I hear what you're saying is the pandemic was good to you, friend. It was. It was mm -hmm. because you know what? We started the online studio two years before the pandemic because I was training a lot of international students. I'm from Montreal, Canada. So a lot of them were coming to Miguel studying and leaving. And a lot of them wanted to keep doing this program because it was really not anything like it out there and so I started the online studio two years prior when everyone's like this is so stupid you should have a boutique studio it should be brick and mortar and I remember being like no 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 and all the naysayers <laughs> coming at me until bam COVID hit and you know what we were the first in line to offer free uh, the online studio platform for free for doctors and nurses around the world and senior centers so we were already at the forefront and you had big corporations and big health clubs they had no idea what to do or how to go about it so I helped I consulted a lot of companies just to get them going but I was so happy I was in that space when no one was in it and no one believed in it because I was able to help others and serve others through my knowledge that's just a beautiful thing I really want to recap for listeners so the the gold that you've got is unlike i think the 
the space that sometimes trainers will come from thinking, well, they can do it all and they could, they could do this and they could create a program for that and they could do this and create a different program for that. You've got one program that mm. you've just simply taken to multiple different venues and it fits and it works and you have all the boxes checked. It's so beautiful. And it was organic and natural. What what we did with the program, instead of people were saying like, create more programs, do a spinning program now, create like a lot of different people were telling me to do different things to grow it. So but what we did is we have a division called Ballet by the Water or Ballet by the Mountain or Ballet by the Beach. And this is our outdoor hot booty ballet. So people love it too. Again, it's very catchy. It's very funky. So we have them uh, on canals. We have them on beaches in different countries around the world. So it's ballet by the water or ballet by the beach. And it, people love it. So it's hot booty ballet outdoors. So people get that right away that it's two different things. What I started doing and realizing is a lot of people love the method, but not necessarily wanting to offer it in the format we were delivering it. So I started doing like, at the SCW and Canfit Pro mini band for seniors and showing hundreds of people. I remember people just looking at me like, how can you create all these exercises with one mini band? We were doing um, mini band big results, mini bands for seniors, mini band for dancers, mini, <laughs> you know, but the program was still hot booty ballet. But if you wanted to take these exercises and whether it's use it in PT, group fitness or any other way, well, you know what? We were so happy to help you and show you how you can. So that's what we did with it. But I didn't create a million other programs. It's just I take the same movements or the same principles or the same techniques. And whoever wants it, we just like kind of like um, assemble it and give it to them in a way that is useful to them. Beautiful. Such a smart business model. So take notes, you guys who are listening. And I want to I wanna ask you, were there specific tools that help you get your studio online? I mean, what have you used and liked if you want to mention names or the <laughs> ways that you went or experienced things that you didn't love and mistakes that you made? Because I think right now you sound pretty darn good to everybody listening. Were there mistakes <laughs> along the way? Oh my God, I have to pray the, the price of learning. Like it's funny, right <laughs> before we got on this call, I got like 10 emails. What should I do from this part? Uh, it was such a learning curve, Deborah. You have no idea how much I've learned, like how much money I spent, how much meetings we've had, how much trial is never ending. Now, if you're going to put videos online, I'm just going to give you like my top three, do this and forget about everything else. My, if you are going to put workout videos online or on your platform, wherever it is, use Vimeo Pro. It can hold the heaviest loads of videos. It can make sure that if you are hundreds of thousands of people are on your website, there's no glitches, there's no nothing. So that is number one advice that I would give your listeners. Put your videos on, Vim on Vimeo Pro. The second thing was, and again, we've done two, three websites. We just finished our latest website. It's like, where do you go? Do you go to Wix? Do you go to this? Do you go to that? After looking at all our options and having tons of meetings with um, web designer, go with WordPress. <laughs> Although it's the hardest one to manage yourself, it is the best one for consumer and user friendly. So Agreed. that's my, you know, that's my, I know people say, oh, but I do this, but I do that. There's Shopify, blah. there's so many, trust me, we've sat, we've listened. And again, we've gone to other meetings, we've sat, but WordPress for what we do is the best platform. You so let me clarify platform? that. Yeah. Let me clarify that yeah. because I think um, there may be two things here that I want listeners to make sure they heard what you said. So when we're talking about, you know, what kind of a website do you choose? WordPress, but you also really are saying as far as a shopping cart, the kind of e-commerce you use, you're suggesting use WordPress. Are you saying then WooCommerce? 
Yes, that's exactly yes. what I'm saying. Yes. Okay. And they yes. needed to know that because yeah. li- listener, you may not know to ask that question yet, but you're going to be glad mm-hmm. we told you that at some point. Just do it. Just research that and just do it. That's going to save you six months of headaches. Yes. <laughs> just, just right there. Just those two advice. My last advice is 100% use Stripe for your payment processing. Okay. Interesting. So that, honestly, if you're getting started in that world, start. And if you are starting as a fitness professional, digital, online, I remember the first thing I started with was a 10-day challenge. Do not try to populate your studio with hundreds of workouts right away. Start with a challenge, just a 20-day challenge, 10-day challenge. Shoot the workouts and keep reselling it and getting new audience for that. Then create another challenge or another ebook. Like get that going first before doing like, okay, I got to film 50 workouts. Like it's just too much. And whatever, whatever you need help with, go to Fiverr. Fiverr built my whole career. <laughs> I know, right? I love Fiverr. I love Fiverr. I'm obsessed. I have like five projects. Um, I remember, okay, Deborah, I swear I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I did a program, a 21-day program, and I had a girl for $100 Go buy the groceries for every recipe, film it, edit it, and deliver it on brand for a hundred dollars. I couldn't believe it. Like, (laughs) yeah, right. Oh, I know. I remember somebody I was working with said, you know, in the new year, I'm going to be raising my rates to this. And I'm like, I'll just pay you that now. Seriously, yeah, come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're yeah. worth every penny. Yeah. Exactly. So go on Fiverr. And if you don't know how to find uh, the person that you want to work on Fiverr, what I do is I Google top five uh, marketing people on Fiverr or top mm-hmm. five social media. Like I'll Google first and see who are the top five or 10 that come up. And then I choose within those five, 10. So I'm not lost in a sea of people. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, brilliant tip. I love it. Oh yeah. I that you know, some people can like go online and they can get lost looking at Amazon. I could go on Fiverr and just mm-hmm. like look around and think, oh, I need that. I might want to get that. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Stop. Just stop. And it's great because it saves you time. Like a lot of people are like, well, why don't you do it? Because it can take them like one, two hours and it would take me a full day. So if it costs you five, ten dollars, like whether it's a one page thing or banners for your YouTube channel or banners for your Facebook channel or somebody that can automate your subscribers or that you don't have to know it all. Like it's really, really difficult to go from being a performer or a fitness professional or someone who loves to help people and movement to all of a sudden becoming uh, an, an engineer, lighting, a programming, social media. Oh my Lord, give me a break. Like, you know, it's too much. So you have to have people around you that can do a lot of that work so that you still in your soul and your heart, you can create content for your consumers and your people. Yeah, I love that. So let me ask you this. So do you, as you are certifying, you're preparing trainers and instructors to teach your programs, do you also help them with the marketing, the marketing pieces? Do you have copy? Oh, yeah. We have a whole section on marketing. We have the pictures, Mm -hmm. the banners. We have uh, quotes, social media. We really want social. Once uh, COVID hit, we had to have a division in our teacher training that was only about online. How to look on camera. Thank God I'd been on TV for eight, nine years. So I already knew cameras, how to look when to speak, how to, you know, pause before you begin a video, stop, like all these little things are important in group fitness programming is knowing um, online fitness etiquette, Uh, your voice, your eyes, your everything you have to learn and you have to teach them because it's funny because today I was um, on a call and I'm part of the the committee of the Mohawk College of Canada. And, uh, you know, I was like, guys, we need an online division. And a lot of the members on the committee, which are all old white men, being like, no, this is so stupid. Everybody's going to go back to the gym. And I'm just like, oh my, where, where are you living? Like, 
No, there are apps, there are platforms, there's so much opportunities for fitness professionals online. You no longer have to be a fitness professional in a studio or gym. You can, you can do hybrid, you can do both, but for fitness professionals, the opportunities are all online right now. So that's what I say, go online, learn how to work, I don't know, learn how to work Zoom more effectively, learn which microphone is better, uh, learn how to get which lighting to come out, how, uh, like take classes. I had to take videography classes. I had to write, uh, take writing lessons so I know how to write my captions. Like take things that are going to benefit you and your business. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, and let me ask you about this because I think among entrepreneurs of all kinds, really. But I find this is true when I'm sitting down, you know, at a mastermind across the table from other health or fitness or just functional doctors, honestly, other health influencers. And we're talking about marketing. How do you feel about farming that out versus doing it yourself, putting it in your voice? I've tried both, Deborah. This is like a back and forth. I'm so good. Mm, yeah. You yeah. know, the truth is marketing is great. You know, you have to have it. Listen, I just won tons of awards and this and that. And we got our uh, social media audit and I still have like over 60,000 followers. And they're like, oh, that's not enough compared to that 15 year old girl. Like I've gone to school for this. <laughs> I, tried, yeah. I did 20 years as a professional. I have 55 certification, I have tons of awards. I'm on panels, committees, international association. And you tell me this girl who has like 20,000 followers is the one that's going to get the sponsorship. Mm. So listen, you know what I mean? It's almost like we have to swallow it. Okay, we have to because they're annoying. They are annoying. And as a true fitness professional, my job is not to be TikToking all day. That's not my goal. My goal is to help people, right? right? But you have to understand that that is the way now. So again, it's funny because I wrote one of my girlfriend who has an online fitness platform. I'm like, listen, yeah, I'm tired of it. You need Instagram. I'm going to start it for you. You should see the conversations. And she has a huge platform platform that's making millions of dollars and she doesn't even have Instagram. Imagine, but she's still making money. So is it like you have to absolutely do the marketing or you can have, I don't know, 10, 15 loyal clients that pay you three to $500 a month and you're making money too. So don't think that it's always volume. I remember last year when COVID first hit, it was like, okay, we need to market. Okay, we marketed. I was doing 12 hours a day of personal training on top of my online studio. And I was like, this is crazy. I had a Zoom burnout before even anybody got on Zoom. And then you know what I did? I was like, I'm going to take two to three clients. I'm going to train them three to four times a week. And I made just as much money. So I just, you know, we always want more numbers, more subscribers, more this, more that. Sometimes if you're doing a great offering at a higher price and you're mm -hmm. marketing it to the people who love you, who follow you, it's a lot easier. I swear to you, it's a lot easier to have like your 20, 30 people that are willing to spend 500 bucks than having, I don't know, 4,000 at 999. Yeah, totally agree. And I think that's a great decision for everybody to think about. I've got um, I've got a mastermind and, and one of the things we come back to over and over again is, listen, you know, if you really want to build this business fast, the fastest way to do it is call one person every day and mm -hmm. ask them to become a client. You get five of those people, you can at least relax and decide mm -hmm. How do I really want to build this business? What do I want my days as a, a business person and entrepreneur to look like? Because that's a legit question, people. Don't build a business you're going to hate. 
and 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 know what you want out of it at the end. So a lot of people are like, oh, okay, well, there's like a million uh, workout videos and they're uh, they're free on YouTube. Why would anyone pay? I, I hear that mm. all the time from directors yeah. at health clubs, from fitness professionals, because it is my energy. It's my technique. It's the jokes that I do. It's the stupidities <laughs> I say they pay right. for. And it's being familiar. Some people, you can say one thing and they just feel connected to you. Now, yeah. some people, again, they say, okay, well, anyone just can pick up a phone and film their content. Sure, anybody can. But you know what? In five, seven years, I want to sell my content to other platforms and stuff. So all, all my content is filmed in 4K. You have to think about the future of this business you're building. Are you going to sell it? Are you going to dissolve it? Are you just going to keep it where it is? Go the way you want to go with it and go to different streams of um, income. So if you have an online studio or something or you created a program or a 20-day challenge, put it on Amazon, uh, put it on other platforms, Udemy. Um, what's this new one? Patreon. It's like OnlyFans, but for like everything else. Uh, put it, take the same content that you have. And instead of having to film all the time, because we're like content, content, I think we only do that because that's what we like to do. But you mm -hmm. can actually take the same content you have, that one challenge, and put it on 10 different platforms <laughs> and uh, make more money from it. And you can also create affiliate links and give it to all your friends and families and stuff like that. So don't break your head about all Always having to have more and more and more content, just repurpose and reuse what you have. Oh, I love that. And again, coming back to you are the queen of do one thing and distribute it many, many ways instead of do many, many things and mm -hmm. sell them once. I mean, so it's brilliance in the use of your energy. I love what you said too, and I want to emphasize this, that you know, if you're listening and you're out there and you're thinking, but everybody, there's already so many free options on YouTube, but I think it is, yes, it is specifically you. They love you and they follow you they want everything you make, they're going to follow that if that's true. But there's also YouTube is random. You know, I mean, so YouTube is a different kind of a model and people going on YouTube for all these free things, they're not necessarily making progress. You know, they're going from one to that to that, but the workout they did today doesn't necessarily relate to what they did yesterday and what they're going to do tomorrow. That's what a program is when you're actually thoughtfully coming up with content that has an A and a B and a C to it and get somewhere from where they are now to where they want to go. There are lots of reasons why people <sighs> want, hand it to me in the mm -hmm. simplest way. Tell me mm -hmm. exactly what to do. They want that. I love that you said that, Deborah. That is so, you could have not like said it better than this. It's, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to do this workout and next week. Okay. Now burpees. Does that person on that YouTube channel know what's going on with your body or know what's happening with you? Mm -hmm. No, zero. So it's always better to also follow someone you trust and follow someone that you look up to. And I think in our industry, you know, I'm not a size zero. I'm a size six. You know what I mean? So I feel it's funny. I feel a lot of the bigger girls feel comfortable, but also the skinnier girls feel comfortable. Like you attract people that need your type of energy in their life at that moment. And regardless who it is, you know, whether it's mm. the seniors or I train children, it's like, think of it in that way. How can I serve that person? What did that person come to me out of, like you say, that noisy online platforms and noisy like field? Why is that person coming to me? Because she needs, you know, I do, I do comedy. I crack jokes. I yell at people. They love that. You know, they can just like, it puts them in their place and people can't wait. And a lot of our things are shot at the beach or in front of um, resorts or water. And people find so much peace in looking mm -hmm. at that natural setting when they're in like minus 30, minus 40. So these are my trademarks of things that I decided. It's always like, 
every three minutes, there's at least two jokes. There's at least one yelling. And there's <laughs> like, scoring. Lucy, Lucy. I see you. I see you. And they're like, oh my God, I swear I thought you were in my house. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just the way you talk to them on camera that they can connect with or not. Yes, fun, the, you know that is so. so rich. I have to tell you that just the other day, someone was so we experiment with you know doing app like workouts. You know, every once in a while, mm-hmm. I will just take here's the exercise, and then I will put that and slice it and dice it into a workout. I tried that once. My members are like, "Is the next program going to be like this this workout right here?" And I'm like, "What's your point?" <laughs> Yeah. She's like, because I didn't like it. And it's like, it felt like calisthenics. And what I realized when thinking about that is they miss the part. Like they miss the dog bombing me, yeah. you know, getting up from the floor. They miss when I'm talking about, you know, here's how I want you to get up off the floor. They want to feel like they're in the room with me and they don't when I yeah. did it another way. <laughs> Deborah, so there was a guy with a donkey behind me for 45 minutes in one of my videos. <laughs> and I kid you not, every single person talked to me about that donkey. Not the work. <laughs> it's like random things that makes them feel like they're with you in that space or that you yeah. really care. And, and, and it's okay. We can all do a bicep curl, but how? How would you want me to do it? In, in mm-hmm. which energy do you want me to do it? In which intensity, in which speed, in which, you know, there's so mm-hmm. much to every movement and that's the energy you bring to your program. And that's why people come to you. They don't come for the bicep curl. They come for you. Mm, beautifully said. All right. So love, I think I could probably, we could go on all day and probably if we did, I should come to the beach. I think we'd have a better conversation <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask you this last question. So this is always the the hardest, but I anticipate for you it will not be. Is there a question I should have asked you, knowing that our listeners are a lot of them kind of midlife women who are in fitness and maybe struggling to get their own voice out or have the confidence to get that voice out? And right now, just Really, I'd love to say right now we're post-pandemic. For a while, I was saying, no, maybe we're in the middle of it. But I think everybody's like, no, we're done. We're done participating. So um, what would you say to help them? First of all, choose your two or three role models, okay? Like, what do you want to do? Which style? Uh, How do you want your content to be presented? For me, I'm going to tell you right now, the thing that made all the difference was having a mentor and it was like the lead program at um, the WIFA, the Women in uh, Fitness Association. I did, as soon as COVID hit, I did a 12-week program and I got to know myself better because once you get to know yourself better, it's a lot easier to know where you come from and why you want to serve others. So definitely get a mentor. My next thing is get coaches. So I have like Natalie Lacombe or um, Maureen Hagen. Like I reach out to, I call them the fitness queens. You're one of them, Debra. <laughs> reach out to the queens because they have walked that pathway that you are just there looking at like, oh my God, how am I going to get to the other side? And they will help you. And again, like I told you before this call, somebody, I'm getting emails, people are like, which processing system, which reach out to people to help you reach out to anybody, whether it's a videographer or, uh, you know, a tech person, get the help. Then get the knowledge, then get the whole image of what is this looking like. And even though you're not sure or you're not comfortable or you're not confident, just take the first step. It's like putting a kid on a bike, like you'll figure it out. Your body will get in motion. You'll start moving forward. Things will start happening. Then you'll start noticing things. Then your members will tell you, like you just said, Deborah, we like this, not that, or blah, blah, blah. There is a saying that I always say is you can't hurry time and you can't hurry experience. 
I always say this, I consult and I help a lot of professionals online and it's like, okay, Sue, teach me, teach me, teach me. It's like, okay, I'm going to tell you everything I know. And I'm very like that kind of person. I don't like to be asked, I'm going to tell you which system, uh, but the learning process is going to take you more time. It's not just as simple. I kid you not, Deborah. If you would have told me three, four years ago that I would be uh, doing uh, coding on my website, I would have laughed at you. I was coding all last week. <laughs> X, 9, G, Y, you know, things like that. You learn. You watch people. If you are in this industry, it's number one, you want to help people. So don't make it about you. Make it about the people. If you don't know what you're offering and if you're not sure, don't be afraid to ask. Use the resources. Use social media. Uh, do a questionnaire. I don't know. Pick up the phone and write a text message. Gather as much information from the people you would love to serve and see what they want. And based on that, do something that will make you happy and also be useful to them. Because there's no way, like I know girls that are like, I'm going to create a hundred page ebook for exercise. It's like, are you going to be happy doing this? What do you mean? It's not about me. It's about that. No. Are you going to be happy those 200 hours writing this? So think about you. What's going to make you happy? Because what makes you happy will definitely shine towards them. And that's why you're going to attract them. But if you're miserable with that program you created or you're unhappy with the systems you're using, it's going to also show in your teaching. So get a mentor, get coaches. It's going to take time. You can't hurry the process and do what you love. So rich, man, it has been an absolute pleasure and you have given a wealth of tips and a wealth, I think, listeners, you'll echo this, of inspiration about what's possible and we can hear the conviction in your voice, girl. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I've been in this my whole life, guys. <laughs> I feel like fitness chose me. I can't get away from it. It's just, mm. I love it. I feel like I was meant to do this and there's so many opportunities, so many, like go out there, guys, corporate, digital, AI, there's even the fitness metaverse coming y'all, everything, <laughs> go out there. There's so many opportunities. There is no lack. Fantastic. Okay, listeners, now, now it is up to you. If there is a question that I didn't ask that you wish you'd have been here in front of Swad and you would have asked. I'd love to know what that is. You can find the show notes today at fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash online fitness business. And what are you waiting for? The world needs us all right now more than ever. <laughs>